On May 11th, a video of an epidemic control officer trying to forcibly pull a close contact with COVID-19 to isolate went viral on the Chinese internet. In the video, a young man refers to the law, saying that the officers have no right to forcibly pull close contact personnel who test negative for nucleic acid to be isolated and refuse to be transferred. A man wearing a large white coat with the word police on it threatens, if you refuse to be transferred, you will be punished by the police. The punishment will affect your next three generations. The citizen responded very calmly. This is the last generation of us. Thank you. This video has since gone viral on the Chinese internet. The sad and resolute response, this is our last generation, thank you, coming from a young person, struck a chord with a large number of netizens, especially with young people. Some netizens commented that it was so shocking, conveying the most tragic and profound despair. And the last generation soon became a hot topic among netizens on social media platforms. However, official censorship followed, and the discussion was immediately shut down and censored online. Not only was the video quickly deleted on the Chinese internet, but comments related to it were also cleared from the entire internet, and even searches for the term last generation were blocked. On May 16, the National Bureau of Statistics of China released economic data for April. The surveyed unemployment rate for the 16 to 24-year-old population reached 18.2 percent, the highest since historical data became available. We don't know if the young man who said, this is our last generation, thank you, was among the 18.2 percent of unemployed young people. But this tragic statement is the strongest indictment of a young man can make against the era he lives in. In recent years, those young people known as Generation Z have gradually entered the workforce. By Generation Z, we mean those born between the late 1990s and the 2000s. Scholars have different definitions of the specific years, but we will assume that they are those born between 1995 and 2009. Therefore, the highest unemployment rate among 16 to 24-year-olds happens to be the young people of Generation Z. According to China's National Bureau of Statistics in 2020, the number of Generation Z people in China is 263 million, accounting for 18.79% of the total population. They were born and raised in an era of rapid economic development in China. On July 11, 1995, China became a WTO observer. On December 11, 2001, China formally joined the WTO, which ushered in more than a decade of prime economic development. Let's take a look at a set of figures. China's GDP growth rate was 9.9% in 1996, 8.3% in 2001, 10% in 2003, and has remained at a high level of over 10% since then reaching 14.2% in 2007 and 10.6% in 2010. Generation Z grew up in such an environment of rapid economic growth, and for most of them, they grew up with no worries about food and clothing, and their material living conditions were much better and richer than their parents. Not to mention that a large proportion of Generation Z is an only child, and some parents are also the only child in their family. As the only child in three families, they have been pampered since childhood, and the elders will not let Generation Z suffer in terms of material consumption and enjoyment. In addition to enjoying the dividends of rapid economic development, another typical characteristic of Generation Z is that they belong to the Internet generation, which is also commonly referred to as the Internet natives. They grew up almost simultaneously with the development of the Internet in China. In 1994, China was connected to the international Internet. From 1997 to 1999, portal sites such as NetEase, Tencent, and Sina were established. In 2000, the 2000 version of QQ was launched, and when the earliest group of Generation Z was in elementary school, QQ was in full swing with 200 million users registered in 2003 and 800 million five years later. When the first batch of Generation Z entered middle school around 2010, the era of mobile internet arrived. WeChat was launched in 2011 and Weibo became popular. 
When Generation Z entered university and started to look for jobs, platforms such as TikTok and Quaisho started to rise, and they entered the booming era of self media. The internet was seamlessly woven into every stage of Generation Z's growth. They're no longer online, but living online. While Generation Z has been living in such an environment, the stories they see and hear are stories of their fathers and brothers who have built up a fortune by their own efforts, and they have a deep sense of recognition of the spirit of struggle. They inevitably have the same expectations for the future. However, when Generation Z entered the society with good expectations and started to look for jobs, they found that the reality they encountered was significantly different from the sense of reality they had built up during their upbringing. The year 2010 marked an important turning point in China's economic development, as the country's economy began to slow down from high growth to single-digit growth in 2011. The U.S.-China trade war, which has been ongoing since 2018, has been a heavy blow to China's economy. The outbreak of the coronavirus in 2020, coupled with the Chinese Communist Party's economic policies in recent years, cracking down on the education and training industry, cracking down on large internet companies, and the three restrictions that have driven the real estate industry into the abyss. After this series of restrictions. Now comes the most severe lockdown of cities, causing the current Chinese economy to sink to the freezing point. The year 2017 was the year when young people born in the first year of Generation Z started to enter the job market in large numbers. It was from that year that the number of university graduates reached record highs: 7.95 million in 2017, 8.2 million in 2018, 8.74 million in 2020. 9.09 million in 2021 and 10.76 million in 2022. As more and more Generation Zs are looking for jobs, the growth rate of good jobs in society is lower than the increment of graduates. So Generation Zs have to work harder and undergo more rigorous competition to find a good job. At the same time, high housing prices and high cost of living also add to their pressure. The huge gap between the bright expectations of the future and the cruel reality seems to be a bit hard to accept for Generation Z, who have been enjoying the excellent material conditions given by their elders. In order to eliminate this contradictory mentality brought about by the difference, some young people try to practice "do not care" and self-denial attitude to dissipate ambitions or disappointment. So a series of negative cultures, such as dejected, Buddhist, and lying flat, were born. Dejected, which became a popular word among young people in 2016, refers to a depressed and dispirited state of mind, emotionally drained, in bad mental shape, and wasting time. By 2018, the slang of Buddhist became popular. Buddhism is about transcending the mundane and following the flow of things. It is a way of life that is guided by the spirit of letting things be. The reason why young people call themselves Buddhist and try to be indifferent is because they know that even if they are concerned, problems will still not be solved. Many things will not have any results even if they try, so they might as well pretend to be open-minded and make themselves feel better. As long as there is no desire and no demand, then there will never be disappointment. One of the differences between lying flat, which became popular in 2021, and dejected and Buddhist, is that it is not a word made by the literary youth, but comes from the lower class society. The term began with a post in a popular Chinese forum stating, "Lying flat is righteousness." Here, lying flat is a kind of low desire life. Some of them even do not fall in love, do not get married, do not buy an apartment suite, do not buy a car. Or do not have children. Work is only to provide minimum living. They do not have long-term stable jobs and make a living by working odd jobs with daily pay, lying down when they have money, and going out to work odd jobs again when they have no money, and so on and so forth. This kind of layabout belongs to the lowest level. Subsequently, the buzzword "laying flat" also became popular among the middle and upper class youth, who also called themselves "laying flat" one after another. There are some urban youths where their fathers still have a lot of wealth, so they can still be dependent on them. Even without too much effort, life will not be too bad for them. 
so they're not in a hurry to find jobs and only work according to their own preferences and spend most of their time at home surfing the internet, playing games, or do things they are interested in. Basically, losing the pursuit of success as defined by the outside world and losing any ambitions they may originally had. Of course, there are also some young people of Generation Z who do not have the capital to lie flat and are not willing to accept their fate. So they choose to join the ranks of the competitors, and thus 996 and 007 become the norm of their lives. 996 means working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day, six days a week. 007 means working from 0 a.m. to 0 a.m. the next day, seven days a week, always ready to enter the working state. Under this fierce and disorganized competition, the culture of involution and catching fish during work hours, slacking off at work, has been born. Involution is a term that has become particularly popular on the Chinese internet in recent years. It is generally used to describe a field. Which excessive competition has occurred, resulting in cutthroat meritocracy and fierce tension. Catching fish during work hours refers to slacking off at work, such as using the company's public resources to engage in matters unrelated to the job, to work less intensely than is required or expected, to be inactive or avoid work. Since there's no way to avoid the involution, they can only catch fish to comfort themselves. Some young people have started to fight for their rights, and programmers in the most intense internet companies have started to oppose involution and protest against overtime work. Alibaba founder Jack Ma was once idolized by many young Chinese and even called Papa Ma. But when he said it is a blessing for you to work 996 hours, Ma became a representative of bloodthirsty capitalist in the eyes of young people and was heavily criticized. The government media also fanned the flames, causing Jack Ma to step down as chairman of the board of directors of Alibaba in 2019, and gradually he faded from the public eye and also began to lie flat. Gradually, the Chinese tech muggles either quit their hard-earned business or empty their Weibo accounts and choose to lie flat. In the background of tightening regulation and intensifying conflict between China and the United States, Chinese stocks listed on Wall Street suffered a collective dive and even delisting in 2022. And internet majors laid off their employees one after another. With the gradual migration of the industrial chain out of China since the U.S.-China trade war, coupled with the frequent outbreaks, the economy is already in a downward cycle. And unemployment and mortgage cuts are coming like a tidal wave to young people. Many Generation Z college graduates are facing a tough employment environment and are choosing to go to graduate school or take civil service exams. But the competition for this path is also fierce. We have previously reported that the ratio of graduate students applying for and being accepted in 2022 is four to one. While the ratio of civil servants applying for and being accepted is as high as 68 to 1, which is why there is a phenomenon of PhDs applying for city street order maintenance positions. More young people who cannot find a suitable job are in what the government calls flexible employment, such as freelance jobs like delivery and online taxi. Among all the freelance jobs, their favorite job is to be a social influencer. This is why you can often see a dozen female influencers broadcasting together, or trends started by these influencers as they earn a considerable income through the netizens. Shanghai's recent lockdown and restrictions had further made the Z generation feel the illusion of a beautiful new world. You think this is a cosmopolitan city? You think there are tens of millions of dollars worth of real estate to live without worries? But the city shuts down. Logistics are disrupted. No matter rich or poor, they have to fight hard for food, and basic survival becomes an issue. Then the zero COVID policy makes them more desperate. Even if they test negative, because they are infected people in the same building, they are considered to be in close contact and will be forced to go to isolation camps. The last bit of dignity was lost when the people had to hand over the keys to their homes. This is why the young man at the beginning of the film cries out in despair. This is our last generation. Thank you. 
Faced with such an era, the young people of Generation Z do not have many choices. Of course, those young people who have the means to do so have one option, which is to vote with their feet and immigrate overseas, as is the current trend. Those who cannot escape can only resist by physically not cooperating or lying flat. While the last generation is a deafening warning from young people to the Chinese Communist Party authorities, as a netizen commented, "Your reign ends with me, and the suffering you give ends with me."